All right, welcome back to PacWest Bigfoot. This is David, and just want to say thank you guys so very much for being a part of the PacWest Bigfoot community. Uh, big old shout out there to Blue Ridge Bigfoot. Also, Monster X, if you guys haven't heard, they have got an awesome, awesome uh, new membership program where you're getting a lot of really awesome content. I suggest you head, guys head on over to MonsterXRadio.com and check that out. Matter of fact, you're going to get a lot of really cool interviews with a lot of really cool folks uh, over there and uh, I'm telling you it's, gonna, it's one of the up and coming best uh, Bigfoot um, Bigfoot shows uh, and uh, interviews and community uh, up and coming right now so just head on over there good friends of mine let me get a sip of water here mm. <clears throat> yeah man it's getting already getting warm outside and everything else but what I want to say real quick is I hope you guys enjoy it but PacWestBigfoot.com has got a facelift it is brand new I hope you guys enjoy it it's uh, um, I think it's a little bit uh, cleaner theme um, and uh, much more user friendly and also it's just really easy on the eyes so you guys can can see some really good imagery in there and uh, read through the old uh, stories here <clears throat> and just so you guys know real quick um we uh i will be having a giveaway again this next month on the 10th so if you haven't signed up yet packwestbigfoot.com packwestbigfoot.com you can get there sign up to be a part of the clan and win a little something so <clears throat> let's get on to this week's packwest bigfoot encounter story living with bigfoot in dunsmere california we have lived in the town, well, the outside of the little town of Dunsmere, California, now for over seven years. Oh, and we live next door to Bigfoot. I know, it sounds funny, like the head, like a headline on some tabloid magazine, like in the New York Post that reads, Bigfoot moves into the in next door to old couple. But it is true, we have a Bigfoot to live here, we know for sure, my wife and I, my wife and I have seen them. Here is what we have seen, and when it all started. Living with Bigfoot. I have never shared our experience until now. I simply did not want my voice online in some interview, and still do not. But I do not mind through this platform at all, so thanks, Dave. So, my wife and I were longtime residents of Redding, California. We lived out near the Enterprise District for most of our lives. We went to school there, raised kids there, and <clears throat> left there when we retired. Well, we did live in Red Bluff for a time, but that was only for a year after my wife and I uh, were married. But we were raised and lived in Redding until we finally retired from our jobs and moved to Dunsmere, just north of Lake Shasta and a few miles south of the city of Shasta. We already owned property there, a couple rentals just a few blocks from downtown. That is what we did. We were property owners and investors, my wife and I. Well, mostly me. My wife had another profession as well. We decided to cash out eventually and move to our favorite little Pacific Northwest town of Dunsmere. It is quiet there. Well, except for at night. Ha! Ah. But it is quiet. Not a lot of trouble around. The people are really nice, and it is a great little community. It has been just over seven years since we left Reading and lived here in the Northwest side of town in the I-5 freeway. We live across the river and up the Bear Creek area, but that is about as far as I will go with the location for now. I recently found this channel and read some of the stories and reports from this area, and well, I decided to share ours with the okay of my wife, of course. Personally, I think these things can seem rather scary, but deep down, I think they can be rather friendly if given a chance. Eh, at least somewhat. But trusting them completely... No, I never could. They are still wild and unpredictable, and unpredictable, as you'll learn from me. Panic mode. I never believed in the in uh, existence of Bigfoot. Even after the first incident, I was still unsure. But what runs off on two legs into the forest at night and way out there? Yeah, I thought it was a person too, perhaps, but soon the wife and I would know better. But, seeing how there are quite a few experiences, I'll keep it to a few, plus a visual. It all started off rather quickly, probably within a month of living there. Today we still hear things and find some pretty odd things out and about on the property. But, here is where and how it all started. <clears throat> it was my wife who would go into panic mode one night. We were, and still do, uh, burn, uh, burning tra we burn trash. Not everything, mind you. Just the paper stuff, wood products all but plastic and rubber. 
We do recycle some, and my wife uh, decided she was going to take out the paper trash to the can, which we would burn. She was not gone long. She seemed to be in a real panic mode when she came hauling through the back door, huffing and puffing and doing the proverbial patting of her hand over her heart. She said something big and tall was in the backyard just beyond the fence. They were in the shadows, and they started running off real fast Second, the second she dumped the paper into the barrel. <clears throat> she was startled by, the time, by that time uh, and came back running, back into the house, thinking it was some crazy person or someone snooping around on the property. I took my rifle with me and took a look around the property, especially out near the fence. I did not see, hear, experience anything while looking around. The rest of that night, I remember, was quiet. That's no bear. Several weeks later, we'd uh, have a visual of something that came as ma a massive shock to us. But before that, I did think that some homeless folk were out in the woods nearby camping or living. It had rained pretty hard a couple days on and off, so seeing some bear and deer track was rather obvious. But seeing large, bipedal, people-like prints, well, that was completely odd and rather nerve-wracking. I was out burning when I'd seen them. <clears throat> I noticed some deer track and some older black bear track I'd seen before. But as I started walking over near the edge of the property, I noticed a few impressions and one partial but clear print of a very wide heel, and I could make out some toes, but barely. They were unmistakably human. Well, what I thought is human because of the heel and toes. They were pretty large, but being a partial and it being wet, uh, soft, wet soil, I thought maybe it was just bigger because of the weight of them pushing outward as whoever walked along here in the rain. No matter what, though, someone was on my property earlier that morning or previous night. Probably the same person my wife saw. I kept burning on through the afternoon until dinner, and that would be the time when I would see the shadow in the woods. That same late afternoon, early evening more like it, I was getting done and wrapping up the burning, and that is when I decided to take a look at the footprint again and other impressions around about. I ended up following them about thirty, forty feet or so into the woods. <clears throat> I looked up and realized how far I'd walked in and started looking around. It was a few seconds before I noticed it, but not fifty yards away into the darker part of the trees I saw, well, I noticed movement. However, whoever, whatever it was, swaying, uh, was swaying or just moving back and forth from behind a tree. It was hard to see back there, and it was getting pretty dark, but I could still see a human shape or silhouette of someone peeking out from behind a tree. I took a few more steps forward, and then bang! <clears throat> that thing, and I knew that I could, it could not be a person at that moment, shot right out and ran <clears throat> on what, look, what looked like all fours at first. But even on all fours, this thing seemed as tall as me, and it looked like after a second or two it stood up and ran like you and I. It disappeared after just seconds, and I was left with a big fat question in my mind about what I just saw, and my heart racing and beating out of my chest. I turned and walked quickly, but calmly, back to the house talking in the woods. A few weeks later, and talking is what I heard, and my wife as well. It was a nice evening. Things seemed to have calmed down for us. Personally, I did call the county sheriff's office and reported someone out and about on our property. I also shared where the print was. It was gone by that point, of course, but the deputy was rather surprised that someone would be out here barefoot. But he did mention that there were some pretty weird folks living out in the woods around the area today, and not too far away from us, mind you. So my mind was made up, it was people, but that idea would be challenged yet again. As I said, it was a nice evening and we were walking the property when we heard talking. It was not too far off, but far enough where we could pinpoint exactly the direction they were in. Then suddenly there came an answer from not too far away again, and just opposite the original. I thought people at first, but my wife said no, it couldn't be. See, while we were property investors together, my wife was also a speech pathologist for nearly 15 years. 
What she was hearing sounded like a foreign language, she said a second uh, uh, seconds later. Uh, so was I. I was hearing. I've heard the Ron Moorhead tapes, and I have to say they are pretty spot on. However, these voices never became as loud as those I heard from his recordings. These were not muffled by any means, but they were low and raspy and literally sounded like some type of crazy and mangled language. But it was time to move when we heard movement ourselves, and whatever they, uh, whatever they were started coming in towards us, not away from us. I grabbed my wife by the hand, and we did not run, but we walked quickly back to the house, and all the while these things kept up behind us. We got inside, and I turned off any lights that were on, and I took a position at the window near the kitchen. It was a bit before I could make out something standing there, again in the same spot as weeks before. But this time, it was a little bit lighter outside, and this was no person. It was tall, black, hairy-looking creature, standing as still as a statue, staring at the house. My wife had her hand over her mouth and was extremely frightened all of a sudden. She reached for the phone to call the sheriff, but at that moment I grabbed her arm and I told her to look. The creature, the Bigfoot, leaned over a bit and sat something on the ground, then turned and walked off into the woods. I did not go out there that evening to see what it left, but it left something. Gifts, but no handshakes. I finally got the nerve to go out there the next morning, and of course, armed. I was not going to take any chances. I did talk the wife into not calling the sheriff for my own personal reasons. But eventually we would call the Forest Service, and that would be rather, well, an uncomfortable conversation. But for now, we were going to do as much investigating as we could ourselves. Besides, they'd probably think we were nuts. I walked over to that tree, and to my surprise, I found three rocks. Not big, about the size of golf balls, really, and all lined up, one right next to the other. Gifting? That was my first thought. My wife warmed to that as well. Rather fast, to my surprise, actually. Days and weeks came and went, and so did the visits at night or the early evenings. We did not trust them, though, and I think they felt the same way about us. There was a night that gave us a reason to not trust them, and to be honest, it scared us pretty good. I had been setting out apples and some other fruit. Oh, and just so you know, they, uh, they left the oranges alone. Uh, they would not be moved around, but left there. They, they, well, they might be moved around sometimes, but for the most part, they were never touched. The apples, however, and other fruit was gone, taken almost every time. But there was one night when I was taking out the uh, taking out the apples again, but this time I was I was met with a grunt, a growl, and a bluff charge, I believe. My wife was there. She was always there, but stood back by the house. Ever since these things started coming around, she would not venture too far out during the evening or at night. I do not blame her, neither did I for the most part, just to drop off the fruit. I was setting the apples down <clears throat> when I heard the grunt, and then, to my left of me, a growl. My wife made a really weird, like, squeal or something, and was pointing in the direction of the growl. There it was, a reddish-brown colored Bigfoot, on all fours, almost glaring at me. It slapped, uh, it slapped the ground once, I remember, and let out another growl. Then, in scaring me half to death, it suddenly stood up and jumped forward in my direction about three to four feet. I almost fell over, back, uh, over backing up as fast as I did, out of just natural reflex. It, the Bigfoot, did not continue any further forward, but it did not move off either. It seemed to be standing its ground. I walked backwards slowly until I reached the house and we both ran inside, and fast. That was the scariest moment we'd have while they were there. Home is where the heart... no, the Bigfoot is. We have had two research, we, researchers out here since about six, seven, uh, six or seven months or so ago. But these things are pretty smart, I believe, and they knew... There were people out here now that were a little more fearless, fearless and bolder than they seemed... Um, so they stayed away, it seemed. However, there were tracks found, and some gifting, I guess you'd call it, and was still happening from time to time. It has now been a year and a half since those <clears throat> two individuals have been out here. These things, the, the, the things seem to have dried up for the most part, at least the boldness of them. 
but I still think they are around as the fruit still disappears here and there. And I have seen more tracks and heard some pretty chilling screams and hollering from up the mountains behind us, even as recent as last week. I am not sure they are coming in as close as they were. I am basically leaving the apples, the apples and other fruit nearly to the edge of my property line and fence, and that is where I have seen more impressions. I think they run around up the mountain and up toward the crags. <clears throat> Locals would know this place, and there has been plenty of reports I have seen over the years from up there. But they are real, and we are planning to let more researchers in soon enough, but we also care about the Bigfoot themselves and do not want to completely scare them off, or worse yet, create a very dangerous situation for us or for them. But that is our story as they say here, Dave. Thanks. Gerald.